thank you to our sponsor, MBA Growth Partners. Welcome to Studio 501c3. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Kim Jones. We're featuring nonprofit organizations that have a 501c3 designation from the IRS because they are charities that provide a public benefit. In most cases, your donations to these organizations are tax deductible. My guest today is Ama Felix, the president and CEO of Collegiate Directions. Ama, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kim. Great. So let's get into what the organization really does. You're supporting low income, often first generation uh, students going to college. You're trying to get them to college, through college. Tell us a little bit more about how Collegiate Directions works. Uh, That's right, Kim. We're really excited about our mission. Uh, We've been in Uh, active in Montgomery County and founded in Maryland since 2005. And we work, we principally work through two programs. Our scholars program focuses on high school students that are at the end of their sophomore year in high school. And we stay with them for six years, two in high school and then four in college until they complete college. Um, Completion is critical. And um, that's part of our founding mission. And um, as a part of the scholars program, we offer two significant aspects. We started in 2016, focusing on mental health and wellness, which based on all the the most recent um, occurrences regarding the pandemic was Mm -hmm. just a prophetic um, and needed uh, aspect of our work. Um, And so we provide on-site mental health support services um, to our scholars. And the second component that we, consciously decided to scale deep with was in 2019, we began what we call our career mentoring initiative. So we help uh, pair our scholars with professional mentors in their field of interest Mm -hmm. um, and help provide them training in areas that align with what employers say they need. Um, So that's the scholars program. The second aspect is called our school support program, where we focus and support um, high school counseling offices around college going cultures, as well as um, helping them um, understand uh, the data in their schools and how to better um, meet admissions criteria and financial aid processes and and the like um, to ensure that their students go go to college. I want to go back to something that you were talking about with the scholars program uh, in terms of the wellness and the mental health, because that's so critical, as you said, you know, coming coming out of a pandemic, coming through, uh, you know, years of crisis <laughs> like that in so many areas in the community, uh, I think people probably didn't realize the impact. So what is it that students probably didn't realize about the, or families didn't realize about the importance of that wellness component as they're looking at this college going process? I think naturally the college growing process is fraught with uncertainty. And when you have uncertainty, that brings up feelings of anxiety. And because a lot of the parts of the college growing process is pretty opaque and and not very transparent, Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's concern about whether I'm good enough, how, what are the, do I have what it takes to be successful? And Mm -hmm. so I think uh, focusing on strategies and skills to be able to address um, those types of anxieties um, are critical and core. And so we work with both families and scholars to help them build those those uh, skills, those resiliency and, skills. And that anxiety, it, it doesn't go away. It doesn't always just go away. We all have a little bit of that, even in our careers, you know, when we've experienced some success, but um, tell tell me a little bit more about the mentoring and how that happens with the students that you're working with. Yeah, we were really uh, happy to add that component of our work. And essentially it's born out of the fact that our scholars are from low-income backgrounds, um, mm-hmm. first in their family to go to college. So they may not have the social capital that it requires to get a really sound and strong Um, well-paying job out of college, entry-level job. And we know that low-income students typically take uh, their first offer, they don't negotiate. um, And as a result, they're underemployed and they're paid about $10,000 less than their peers. And that Mm -hmm. compounds itself over time. So having a mentor is someone who can give you, be a sounding board 
who can coach you around what to expect in the workplace. What are those unwritten rules about culture that are going to help you be successful? So we really think that a pairing our scholars with professionals is really important. Thank you for that. And, you know, to follow on from that, students are often, um, I think, torn. Uh, you know, I spent some, I spent about 12 years working in uh, college access, and sometimes they're torn about the path to follow. And uh, can you talk a little bit about how you're helping them realize what their path forward might be? Uh, especially if they're torn between uh, an industry, a career, uh, a passion, maybe they want to combine some things and, you know, and uh, consider two things in college, three things in college. And the parents will say, no, no, you just have to focus on one. And, and they're, you know, determined that, you know, I'm going to kind of combine something and create my own. So do you help with those pathways? I think that's part of what the exposure to a mentor who is a professional. Mm -hmm. um, we often have webinars with uh, professionals who are, our scholars are Black, Asian, Latino, right? People of color who may not have access to um, professionals who mm -hmm. uh, look like them. And right. so just exposure. So we've had webinars with various executives from corporate America, from nonprofit, um, public sector, who can tell them that a pathway to a career is not a straight line. And I think that gives them the strength and the courage to want to explore and really figure out what their match is. We also have a career summit, um, usually in the fall of the year, where we have experts come in and they can do career assessments. Uh -huh. So that they can get a sense of, oh, you know, my strengths are in this, or I have an aptitude for that. And um, that also helps um, there. They also figure out how to negotiate job offers sure. and, and, you know, uh, skills like that. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break. And then when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more with you about collegiate directions and the, the whole process of um, advising. So uh, take, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides at aarp.org slash caregiving. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Once there was a boy who did the same thing again and again. One day he was told he had autism. He got help and slowly learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Welcome back to Studio 501C3. I'm talking with Ama Felix, the president and CEO of Collegiate Directions. And before the break, we were starting to, to talk a little bit about the whole advising. You're actually advising advisors, I think, um, if that's an easy way to, to say it. Uh, tell me about how you're improving that whole college uh, experience and college advising by working with those professionals in schools. Um, on this, we call that our school support uh, program. And there we work with, in the state of Maryland, for example, there are 369 students to one counselor on average. Mm -hmm. So there's not enough time for counselors um, and, and high school counselors have a wide array of responsibilities, not just mm -hmm. college. 
So we work with them to help um, provide access to experts. So we have a um, professional development component of the work as well to help them talk to one another to troubleshoot some of their issues, but also to really understand what the college admissions process is like. Mm -hmm. And if some of them are um, having uh, challenges within their school around data, how to um, coalesce that information to make it a strength to really promote their school and their students. So it's a, it, it varies and it's mm -hmm. a wide array of support. Um, and also within the school building to ensure that the college access folks are in communication with the academic side of the house so that everyone's sort of marching to the same um, drummer, so to speak. Okay, but it, so it sounds like what you've really done is is to create a partnership. It, this is this is more than just a transactional, you know, we're going to, you know, help with the support here. This really has become a partnership and you must have other partnerships out in the community as well. We do. This is a, a really strong partnership. One of the new things that we added last year was what we call our CDI Learning Academy. Mm -hmm. And that's really a professional development opportunity that we started for our staff because professional development dollars are short. Right. So we started bringing in experts to talk about the latest trends in education. And then last year, we extended that opportunity to our peers in the field. So we have people come in from various uh, think tanks, policy advocacy organizations to focus on special topics of interest to people in our field. And it's just been very well received. For example, we just recently hosted a session on um, mental health first aid, which is a best practice in the field. And we opened it up to our peers as well. So um, that's really, we're connecting with our community in a variety of ways. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, plans for the future? Are, are there program areas that you want to expand? Is there something new that you'd like to introduce? Uh, we've got about one minute left. I think what we would like to do is really embark on a new strategic plan with the idea that we want to take a look at the last three years and find out what did we learn from virtual programming? Mm -hmm. um, are there ways to better scale the work that we're doing with new partners and new regions, et cetera? So I think um, just taking a step back, which uh -huh. is hard to do when you're constantly on the run doing the work, but take a step back to think about what have we learned um, over the last few years and what are some of those lessons that we can use going forward to propel our work even further and to touch more people in need. Yeah, reflection is very good. Um, that's the end of our time, but I want to thank you for providing this service to the students in our community and uh, also for joining us today and sharing this information with our audience. Thank you, Kim. This was a wonderful opportunity. I'm glad um, to be able to share the work that we're doing and, and let the community know what's happening. Thank you. It's very good work. To learn more about Collegiate Directions, visit their website at collegiatedirections.org. Thanks to Montgomery Community Media for letting me help review valuable information. I'm Kim Jones. See you next time on Studio 501C3.